sir you can start now good evening friends and welcome back to the show of mirror wisdom reflected the name mirror wisdom reflected comes from the fact that i act as a mirror to get the wisdom reflected from some very intelligent good guests who are highly knowledgeable on that subject sir you can start now so this is this is exactly what we'll be talking about today and we have a very important topic which is a burning topic right now and that is omicron the return of the tiger back again the headlines were screaming day before yesterday yesterday sharukh khan katrina priyanka gandhi sonia gandhi devendra fadnavis testing positive for covid 19 well you could see the writing on the wall shanghai had closed down about a month and month and a half to back there's no way in which we could have escaped anything the scenario in london is also not very great back in the uk there are a lot of cases happening back in the us in california in midwest there are a lot of cases happening it was a question of time before we get a lot of people testing positive now whether this is the third wave an extension or whether it is a fourth wave how lethal it can be how good it can be this is what we are going to be discussing today i have known of friends who have taken two shots with a booster have had covid and again in the last 2 3 days have tested positive for covid this is exactly the scenario so we still don't know many things about covid 19 yes we know how it behaves we know how we can treat it how well we can control symptoms like earlier ventilator used to be the answer steroids ivermectin we are going to discuss what is the latest trend what test to be done how much to be scared whether to take it as a part of our life how many such more waves are going to be coming and where do we stand at on the omicron wave this time somehow there is uh, there was a urgent meeting by the maharashtra government cabinet but you don't read too much in the media so people are not scared as yet but i can tell you that if i can see a few friends and patients becoming positive i'm sure your couple of your friends and acquaintances have also become positive in the last few days we have with us a very knowledgeable guest a dear friend you don't read too much in the media so people are not scared here an extremely sharp intelligent human he's a physician of great stature phenomenal memory a great teacher had done a lot during the first wave and the second wave of covid have saved a lot of lives has given a lot of common sense and you could see how much he was interested in imparting knowledge he used to take his own video to tell people not to be scared of this or to do this or not to do that now that is how much he is involved as a physician and that was all for social service he is a great satirist and humorist he has been there on shows on the indian television screen giving his humor so he's a multifaceted polymath multidimensional human dr tushar shah welcome to the show tushar you are muted oh uh, thank you dr himanshu thank you so much for inviting me i'm glad thank you tushar to start with straight away what is this wave is it the third wave fourth wave how bad is it right now how good or bad what's going on so uh, first thing uh, is that a new wave can be defined in multiple ways the one way in which i would define new wave is if a variant of uh, sars cov2 virus is completely different from the previous <coughs> virus in its transmissibility or in its severity i would call it a new wave now uh, the wuhan the ancestral strain the first wave uh, was due to that strain and the second was delta delta we know was worse than the first wave virus in its virulence and its transmissibility omicron the third wave virus of india was worse than delta in its transmissibility 300% more transmissible but less virulent within omicron now there are five recognized important variants ba1 2 3 4 and 
B8.1, B8.2, etc. Within Omicron, the latest two to strike the world, B8.4 and B8.5, are not more severe than the older Omicrons and marginally more transmissible than BA1 and BA2. So in that sense, transmissibility is a little more, but the severity and the symptomatology is nearly the same. So I would not call it a fourth wave. For the fourth wave to occur, a new uh, variant will have to appear, which is much more transmissible. So, yeah, it is probably what I would call the second surge of the third wave that is happening currently. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you allow me, I will explain what the Omicron sub lineages are about. So, Omicron uh, was first uh, discovered by the South African doctors around November uh, 2021, and it arrived in India around December 2021, we saw a huge peak of Omicron, the original Omicron uh, in January and February. By February, BA2 took over from BA1. And this BA2 continued in February to uh, peak. Then it has, it, the, within BA2, there have been certain sublineages which have uh, created a, a huge wave in the US. This BA.2 has now is now gradually giving way to BA.3 and 4. Now, the interesting part, the most interesting part here, because, uh, sorry, BA4 and 5. So the most interesting part here is that BA.4 and BA.5, though not worse in their uh, severity, though only marginally worse in their transmissibility, are defeating BA.2 hands down, BA1 has almost disappeared. BA3, BA.3, uh, panch panda hote the Mahabharat mein. So BA.3 is like Nakul and Sehdev. It came and it went and nobody asks about BA.3. Only uh, and Nakul and Sehdev are easily forgotten by the readers. So this is BA.3 is immaterial and irrelevant probably. But BA.4 and 5 are important. The most important thing about BA.4 and 5, which we, we will be hearing again and again soon, is that they escape the immunity given by BA.1 and BA.2. Now, this is the most important aspect of this search. Remember, those who had BA.1 would not get BA.2. But those who have had BA.1 and BA.2 which was in January and February 2022, can get BA.4 and BA.5. So this is the most important thing, which is why the numbers can be significant, I think. So are we expecting a large wave in June, July? So the wave has started. Uh, the surge has started. As I said, I would yeah. not call it the fourth wave, but the surge within the third wave has started. I will just give you a few numbers to crunch with. In, in the, the maximum number of per day recorded cases in Mumbai, in the beginning of the third wave, which was the Omicron first surge, was about 13,000 cases per day in Mumbai. Proven cases, obviously the cases were many more because rapid antigen tests were do, being done very commonly. Currently, uh, about two weeks back, Mumbai had about 300 cases per day. 300. Sometimes they have gone below 100 also, I think one or two days, below 100, which was kind of the tapering of the first surge. Today, I think we have about 1,200 or 1,300 last 24 hour documented cases, 1,300. I think we will reach a few thousand very soon. Again, remember, rapid antigen tests are the most commonly done tests, if at all tests are done. Most people don't test. Most people don't realize that they have had COVID and that it passes off. You must understand that for every one symptomatic case of COVID, there'll be 40 plus cases which are asymptomatic. So they will obviously not test. We are talking about large numbers here. So the numbers will be large, but at the same time, they'll be so mild. Almost all of them will be so mild that hospitals will not be bothered. 
so tushar what has happened the trend is nobody wants to get immobilized you know so they don't tell the government so the rt pcr is not done because it is reported to be government and the antigen test is available freely so people do it at home they keep moving around in the crowd and that's how it spreads rapidly am i right or not because if you say 40000 more on a thousand it's like humongous now what i i'd like to think it i think like this that what is the cost of an infected person moving around versus the cost of a lockdown i think the cost of a lockdown in this current omicron wave is much higher than the cost of uh, moving around by infected people since asymptomatic covid is so common and asymptomatic people can infect others there is no way you can ensure a good lockdown not even a decent lockdown uh, an absolute lockdown is <coughs> a chinese style lockdown is the only lockdown that will work which should not be done because then you are killing people by hunger not by not by omicron so i don't think a lockdown is necessary i don't think it is easy to escape omicron per se because except n95 mask nothing works so i think you should you should uh, lay bare your arms except it's not defeat really but except that you can't uh, you can't overcome omicron and and protect the very old protect the very debilitated if you can so you don't expect the mortality to be high this in this wave you may have a little morbidity not at all even when they write that there are two deaths yesterday or one death yesterday you must realize most of it these deaths are not due to omicron they are with omicron I mean if a patient gets admitted for say a bad septicemia which is due to pneumonia bacterial pneumonia and incidentally they are found to be uh, rapid antigen positive <coughs> then the deaths will be labeled categorized within covid but it is not due to covid so i don't think omicron can kill very easy so this is great news i think if <coughs> if we are not going to see too much of death that's why i think the government is quiet i was going to ask you my next question the government isn't taking much they are keeping quiet they are watching but actively inactive that they are right now you don't see much media reporting on the screen on papers yeah. otherwise yeah so, i think the government is doing wisely i think the government is wise in not imposing lockdowns not sealing buildings uh, etc they have said people should wear masks uh, in public places which is fine uh, but i i think it the our government has done a couple of very good things i think which is uh, which is uh, very very uh, comforting one is they have not made boosters compulsory one of the few uh, nations who have not made boosters compulsory they are still called precaution doses which is very nice because we know that boosters don't protect against omicron so i think our government is doing good in many aspects so booster doesn't protect you against omicron the original doses that you took two of them doesn't protect you against omicron what protects you so that's the new strain so now we are coming to the fact that despite we taking two doses earlier and a booster since this is a new strain it escapes the immune status of the human of that person and you can still manifest with covid symptoms am i right so one important thing okay i am a pro vaxer ex- extremely pro vaccination and one good thing about vaccination and da- and its data is that two doses plus booster in the elderly 60 plus especially or with those with comorbidities protect against severe omicron so that is one of the things that uh, the vaccine does so i would strongly encourage boosting uh, in the elderly now boosting elderly is what bit, Elder, elderly is what age group so the us defines elderly as 60 plus i would say our life expectancy in india is 10 years less than the us so 50 or 55 plus in india because india also has significant metabolic diseases i would say 55 would be the cut off for me for taking a booster but if you have had any covid in the past remember first wave second wave third wave any covid in the past plus two vaccines is equal to or better than three vaccine shots so if you had covid in the past i would request you to consider not taking the booster 
Because the reason is this: vaccines are not harmless. The benefit to risk ratio is towards benefit in most situations. But in patients who have COVID, the benefit to risk ratio is not great. So risk becomes a significant uh, proportion. So I would say two shots, one infection, no vaccine, no further vaccine. Very interesting, Tushar. Very bold statement that you're passing, and very nice. I totally agree with you on that. That the original antibodies which you got from the COVID was the best antibody that you could get. Not and the best one is not from the. And do go ahead, go ahead, the go ahead, vaccine. Go ahead. The vaccine was made with which virus in mind? The original virus, the Wuhan strain. So if the Wuhan strain vaccine is still working, then obviously the Wuhan infection itself. As has to be better than the Wuhan vaccine. There is talk about you know boosting antibody levels. There are studies which show antibody levels get better with third and fourth uh, <coughs> four doses. But I'm telling you that there is something called T cell immunity, which is lurking there in our body to protect us, even when antibodies are not in a, uh, not in a good level. So depend on the immunity that you got naturally. Rather than keep on boosting yourself, and it's ridiculous how Israel, USA are giving fourth doses of vaccine in Omicron. At least the the target is a moving target. It was Delta. You can't be in the Delta mindset right now. Now we are in the Omicron game, and it's a much much better target to have. You want to? Yeah, that that's nice, sir, to share to know that, and I totally agree with you. What is your opinion on doing your antibodies level, and if they are really low? Because there are a lot of people, despite getting Omicron, despite taking the doses, their their immune status was low, and their antibody levels were low. So, do you think people be should should be doing their antibody status to take decision regards the booster dose? Absolutely no, not not antibody levels of spike protein. There is only one area of antibody testing which is useful, which I'll tell you. First of all, I'll repeat: if you have taken two doses of the vaccine and you have taken a hard infection, if antibody levels are not good, the antibodies will immediately become good when you get Omicron infection. The body fights like a tiger. If you have taken, if you had Omicron, uh, uh, any COVID before. The antibodies will be produced by the body at the time of the infection with the help of what is called T cells. So don't worry about antibody levels being low, and hence you taking the booster. That is one important thing. The only situation where antibodies may be useful is suppose suppose you have had uh, two shots. You want to decide about the third shot. You are not sure whether you have had Omicron in January or not, and if that is so. Then you do the antibodies to what is called as the nucleocapsid antigen of the virus, which is not the spike protein antibody. It's a nucleocapsid antibody. If your nucleocapsid antibody is positive, then you had some COVID infection in one of the three waves, with one exception. If you have taken Covaxin, then you can get antibodies to nucleocapsid antigen also. But most of us have taken COVID shield. So if you have taken COVID shield and you have you do your nucleocapsid antibodies and if they are positive, you can rest assured that you have had COVID in one of the three waves. Yeah, and then Great. don't take the booster. Great, Tushar. That was a lot of enlightenment. That when to do antibodies, whether or not to do antibodies, the original ones are good. Uh, tell me if you feel that you have mild body ache fever. Do you still consider that if you get cough, cold, a little body ache? It is Omicron unless proved otherwise, or it could be many in other this, viruses. In this month, that is again true. Like it was in January, cough, cold, oral temperature ninety nine or more. Presume Omicron. By presuming Omicron, uh, you are you are doing two three good things. One is you will isolate a little well, or at least mask very well, and you will be away from the senior people in your house. So presume Omicron. I am strongly recommending that everybody who has symptoms must do the testing of either rapid antigen or RT PCR. If you prove that you have had Omicron now, it will come in useful. That proof will come in useful for future decision makings 
regarding boosters, etc. So must prove that you have had Omicron, with, even with the rapid antigen test. Yeah, I want to. Uh, how much do you trust the rapid antigen test vis-a-vis -vis the RT-PCR? So there is a little controversy now developing uh, or a little debate now developing with BA.4 and BA.5. We may see that BA.4 and BA.5, the RT-PCR, may show something called the S gene dropout. Now, that's a technical thing. But anyway, the point is this, that there might be a little less sensitivity of RT-PCR for BA.4 and BA.5. However, between our rapid antigen test and RT-PCR, if you do RT-PCR on day one or rapid antigen test on day two, the sensitivity, sensitivity or pickup is nearly the same. First day rapid antigen sometimes comes negative even if you have COVID. But if you do it again on the second day, the chances of pickup are very, very good. So I would say 80% sensitivity by day two of rapid antigen tests. Yeah. So a corollary to that, somebody tests positive today, mild symptoms. Isolation for how many days recommend at this time? Five days, seven days? So there are some official bodies which are saying seven days. I would, I'm recommending to my patients five days. But frankly, you know what I'm veering towards? I'm thinking no isolation, Lovely. only N95 masking. For example, a doctor has a clinic to attend, a surgeon has the surgery to do, or somebody has a very important thing to do at office or work. Just wear an N95 mask and move out. Avoid crowded transport, which would be unfair to other people. But if you're taking a rickshaw, for example, which is open, please move out if the government so allows. Of course, we don't want to break laws. I don't even, I don't even know if there are laws. But if, if, if the government does not mind, or even I hope the government changes its mind, and if you can responsibly wear an N95 <coughs> mask, you can move out with the mask. What I'm telling my patient currently is, stay in your room for five days because that is the norm. But if somebody has to come into your room or you have to go to somebody else's room, please wear a good N95 mask and move. Even if you transmit the Omicron, it will be a low viral load Omicron because of the mask. And maybe giving a very low viral load is a favor that you are doing to the other person. That's what I believe. It's a slightly shameless thing to say, but I, I would believe that. No, very honest and a fair opinion. Path breaking, what you are saying is very true. Mild amount of virus would give you the antibodies. It's like taking the vaccine indirectly. So it, it's definitely revolutionary what you're saying. And I, I, I second your opinion on that. What tests should we do now? Should we be doing like the good old days, uh, all the tests? Yeah. So you know, first of all, I'm, begging, what, what? I'm begging all patients not to do blood tests. Unless you are diabetic, hypertensive, and you've not done any blood test for the last two and a half years since COVID broke out, then you do your routine test. Take this as, as an excuse to do some routine tests like kidney profile and uh, HbA1c and sugars, etc. But just because you have COVID, don't do D-dimer and CRP and CP. Don't win Omicron. Treat Omicron as a common cold. Now is the time to be very clear in your mind. Treat Omicron as a common cold. Do you do blood tests in a common cold? You don't do blood tests in a common cold. So you must, because wrong D-dimer reports are rampant. D-dimer, so ka normal hai, che so hai na, somebody will give you eliquis that is an anticoagulant or aspirin, which is nonsense. Please do not get over-treated just because you did the wrong tests. Stop doing blood tests. Again, yeah, no brilliant answer, Tushar, right from the heart. Really appreciate it. And that's why we called you right from the heart. That if you have a small infection, if you're not terribly down, you can move around with the N95. If you give a little bit to somebody, it's a benefit to them because, you know, it's like the vaccination. Be very careful. Don't pass it on liberally. Don't sleep in the same room. Avoid contact. Don't be sure that you will not give it. But at the same time, test yourself because if you are positive, that means that you have immunity for the future and you may not need a booster dose again. So it's a great way to protect yourself uh, at any given point of time. I think that's a brilliant answer. And what medications to take when you're isolated home, you're not doing any test. You are 
you are antigen positive what medication should the person take what is more important is what medication should a person not take i have seen patients self medicating with azithromycin i think through the pandemic the num- public enemy number 1 has been azithromycin public enemy number 1 yeah or tens of millions of extra doses of azithromycin have gone into people's bodies as compared to azithromycin prescribed prior to the pandemic please do not take any antibody you know zifi zefu augmentin don't take them i'm saying brand names because the public knows or knows brand names don't take antibiotics aur ek antibody lenge kya karenge are baba simple hai ye virus hai virus is not responsive to antibiotics antibiotics are for bacteria and even within bacteria sometimes you don't need to give antibiotics so please do not worry about uh, so the medicines are paracetamol three most important medicines paracetamol 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 these are the three most important medicines morning afternoon night if you and you take vitamins and you can take your kadhas and your honeys and your haldis you decide what you want to take don't take antibiotics don't take antivirals no which no monopiravir aaya tha favipiravir aaya tha please don't take antibiotics or antivirals in 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 omicron you want to i think lot of clarity in your answers tushar much appreciate this you don't need to take antibiotics friends Uh, because anyway antibiotics are against bacteria not viruses and there is no comorbidity there is no co infection of virus fungus and bacteria together unless you are in a debilitated position then you will need hospitalization now a corollary to the whole thing when do you need hospitalization tushar yeah so in omicron you will rarely need hospitalization due to omicron in fact uh, uh, from end of december till now i have had about 50 hospitalizations in my practice which i have been due to omicron many of them have been unnecessary hospitalizations because of panic and some were deserved hospitalizations as against delta and wuhan virus when we had hundreds to hundreds of hospitalizations so the reason for hospitalization because hypoxia does not occur in omicron oxygen doesn't go down so the principal reason for hospitalization is the patient not eating at all and is vomiting or not taking liquids and is dehydrated then i would admit that patient secondly if a patient is a diabetic patient and the diabetes is completely uncontrolled 400 500 blood sugars i would admit that patient so and some patients i have so much such bad throat pain in omicron that they can't take food they can't take liquids such patients for the sake of hydration i might hospitalize that patient but very uncommon to hospitalize thoda sa dheeraj rakhenge do din teen din ka khel hai mostly if you are slightly patient you will avoid hospitalization you will avoid panic uh, so yeah you know it even if you get dehydrated if you are otherwise healthy dehydration not going to kill you in two days so be patient don't be panicky Yeah, yeah, the moment moment COVID nineteen name comes, everybody panics. You know that's the whole issue, and that's why they start taking medication. They start doing everything. A question from the audience: uh, What about ivermectin? I'm sure not required, but still, I'm asking you for the sake of no, asking. No, must, Do we need to take ask, ivermectin? You must ask. Uh, so <clears throat> I always said that, um, unfortunately or fortunately, uh, ivermectin is still being prescribed by doctors, still being taken by patients, and I have. Uh, always compared ivermectin to shahrukh khan uh, sorry to salman khan you know there are some people who love salman khan and some people who hate salman khan ivermectin is like that and those who love salman khan cannot be made to hate him and those who hate him cannot be made to love him so there is no sense in convincing anybody about ivermectin uh, at the same time i must tell you that there is no real evidence that salman khan is a good actor similarly there is no real evidence that ivermectin is a good drug so you can take your choice and decide but i am sure <coughs> that i am sure that now we have learned most doctors have stopped prescribing ivermectin and we have learned 
like we learned in HCQS, like we learned in doxycycline, azithromycin. We have learned that ivermectin has no substantial evidence in its favor. A word, friend, from me as, as being the practitioner of modern medicine, I'm very open to homeopathy, allopathy, Ayurved, Yunani, uh, Reiki, every kind of therapy, whichever works. We know in the beginning, there were people who gave those homeopathic tablets saying that this works and you will not get COVID. Do you realize that there was no study done and it was given? It never worked. People still got it, but nobody's talking about it. Whereas modern medicine has the courage to say that this is what we thought in the beginning. We have done our studies. This is not the right thinking process. We are ready to change, adapt, acclimatize, and give the right thing that science says. Evidence-based medicine. This is the difference between just flinging in the air. Or no, I am not against any kind of treatment. I am trying to give you real, realistic understanding about the subject. Right, Tushar? Absolutely. Absolutely. I yeah. think science is... I think science has to be given importance. I, that is not evidence happening. Based, yes, evidence-based medicine. And we are ready to eat back our words. Not because we were wrong, but because Please. that was limited knowledge at that point in time. And now that we know a lot more about it, we are ready to change and adapt to what is going on. What That's Tushar true. said is so, so very enlightening. Wear a mask, move around if you have to, get your job going. Don't worry about it. Protect the others in your family, the elderly people and your children and otherwise. But life doesn't stop. It's not a full stop. It's like any other cough, cold, fever that you might get. Get used to it the faster you do. Because the thing about any kind of COVID or whichever that you have, you know when it is coming, but you will never know when it disappeared. This is a good old saying of life. You will never know. But we have to get our antibodies meanwhile and go ahead with it. Tushar, now a question for the school and children. Very, very important question because parents are always worried about children. Schools have just reopened. And uh, should children be taking uh, uh, the vaccination or should, should we be sending children to school? So I have a very strong opinion about vaccination. I have, I have this very strong opinion about vaccination in children, which is against the op uh, opinion of most pediatricians uh, who I know, which is against the recommendations of Indian Association of Pediatricians. But I would like to have uh, my word go through here. I do not recommend any dose, even the first dose of COVID vaccine in people below the age of 30, unless they have significant comorbidities like type 1 diabetes, severe asthma, etc. Two, three reasons for that. Uh, one, Omicron in children or younger people is mild. And mild Omicron is not prevented by vaccine. The most important thing. Second, even if you think that you want to protect the elders of the house by giving vaccine to the children, that is not going to happen because children will get Omicron in schools, even if vaccinated or boosted, boosted and they will bring the infection home. Human. There is a statistic from the USA that you have to vaccinate 20 million children to prevent one COVID-related childhood deaths. 20 million vaccine shots going into the body with, without significant knowledge about what side effects can occur in children. We know that Pfizer vaccine, that is the mRNA vaccine, and the <clears throat> Moderna vaccine cause myocarditis, especially in the younger people. We know COVID causes clots in the veins. They are rare, and we should not be scared of those side effects in people who deserve vaccine. But people who don't deserve the vaccine and you want to give something, the whole principle of first do no harm is being contradicted here. So if you have a child who has not taken Omicron, and now we know that even five-year-olds are being given vaccine. If you have a child who has not been given any vaccine, please consider your child lucky and do not give the vaccine. However, Please ask your pediatrician because if your child has some special conditions where he deserves the vaccine, you carry on and obey the pediatrician. But I do know that the pediatricians are recommending for everybody and I think they will realize their mistake like allopaths realize their mistakes regarding HCQ and acetamicin. Yeah, so very important question for parents because children, everybody is scared about children. 
So you don't need to vaccinate them. Don't worry about it. Friends, myocarditis, uh, Tushar just said, but myocarditis is inflammation of the endothelium of the heart. I, itis is inflammation. So if you have inflammation in the heart muscles, that is one of the noted side effects of the vaccine, as he said. Not very common, but uncommon, but it is there. That's what he was trying to say when he explained. Right, Tushar? Myocarditis and the second one was? So venous thrombosis. It occurs due Correct. to COVID shield. Our vaccine, COVID shield, causes venous thrombosis. Their vaccine, mRNA vaccines of Pfizer and Moderna, they cause inflammation of the heart muscle, myocarditis. And there are some things that we still don't know about side effects. So why give something that is not useful and rarely may be harmful? That is a simple statement. Why do you give something that is not useful in preventing infection? It is not useful in preventing deaths to any significant degree in children. People talk about long COVID and prevention of long COVID. There is no proof that uh, if COVID happens and you are vaccinated, long COVID will be less common. There is no evidence. And you can't just uh, throw statements and favor vaccines like that. What happened is, unfortunately for vaccine makers, who have done such good work, such good work, vaccine makers and researchers have done. Unfortunately, the newer vaccines like Corbivax, etc., they are like umbrellas that are being sold after the monsoon has gone. The Delta was the monsoon where we needed the umbrellas. Omicron is not the time for umbrellas. Omicron is the time where not, umbrellas can do anything. So, yeah. The latest not Corby vaccine in the market, two, three days back release. Corby vax. Yeah. Corby vax is a, so, I don't know about Corby vax much because it's a new vaccine and the trial was probably hurried. Approval was very hurried. As I said, the, the obviously because they have done so much in researching the molecule, spending money on the molecule, uh, and now they suddenly realize that the necessity is not there. Significance is not there. So obviously there is a little bit of a hurry of approval, etc. I think, and therefore I think that uh, I don't. I would not recommend a booster in most people, except if you are above sixty. If one thing where Corbivax may become useful is that if you are you have taken two doses of COVID shield or vaccine and you have age of 55 plus and you have comorbidities and you have never had Omicron or any other infection COVID before, then you can take the third shot as Corbivax so that there is a little hybridization of hetero, meaning it's called heterologous vaccination. There is one vaccine or two doses of one type, one dose of another type, may be useful to you. But maybe, I, 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 choice I, of I, words, maybe. choice of words are very important. Maybe we have no evidence to do that because a lot of these studies have been hurried through to come into the market very quickly. Oh, yes. Yeah. How about the role of vitamin C and vitamin D? Would you so like vitamin to? C, vitamin C, I believe, and science believes that there is no role, zero role. And vitamin D, I believe, has a strong role. And there are good observational studies that show that vitamin D has good role. Uh, what vitamin D does is, of course, it is good for the bones and muscles, etc. But what vitamin D probably does is it protects against severity in many, many respiratory viral infections, not just COVID. So I, and of course, we do know that sunlight is a problem and everybody needs vitamin D. So as a general recommendation, I strongly advocate vitamin D 60,000 units per month for life, pandemic or no pandemic, to everybody. And if it benefits COVID, well and good. So it can be taken in milk or water, D-Rise or whichever that you like, any of so the brand names? Basically, yeah. it's a fat-soluble vitamin. So it should be taken after a meal. And if you can't take a meal, then you should take it with milk rather than water because milk has some fat. But even taking it with a couple of rotis with ghee is good enough. So, <coughs> uh, and injectable vitamin D is uncommonly necessary. If you can take one someone 60,000, you're, you're uh, doing well. What about uh, the high risk contact? Should they be tested or quarantined like the good old days? So, I, I left one question incomplete. What happens to school children? Should you send them to yes. school? What do you expect from school children? Yes. Yes. Please send them to school. 
please let them get infected in school because they will get infected. You can't prevent that. Please don't panic about infection or be worried about infection. Let them bring infection home. If you have a very senior citizen at home, try not to get the school child very close to that senior citizen unless they are you or somebody, at least one of them is uh, wearing a mask. Please do not worry about school. Schools are will be a uh, definitely a hotbed of infection. But one important thing here is a huge number of the ch ch uh, children's population is already infected in the January, February wave of Omicron. A huge number of children have been infected. The rest, the residual children will be infected this time. So don't worry. Great. The one more question is recurring throbbing headaches. Is there some answer to that? Recurring throbbing headache? Uh, so COVID is known to uh, cause headaches by two important mechanisms. One, COVID can worsen pre-existing migraine. Migraine can become very severe if you had uh, migraine previously and COVID now, COVID will cause the migraine to worsen. And secondly, COVID and COVID vaccines, both COVID shield especially, can cause severe headache by causing clotting in the veins of the brain. So if you have an unusual headache after COVID or after COVID vaccine, then you must consult a doctor. Yeah, very important. If you get an unusual headache, throbbing headache, which is not going by the regular means in a day or two, uh, don't take it lightly. Consult your doctor if you need to do an MRI or something to find out if there is any clotting. It has to be ruled out because that is one of the things which can happen in COVID and or the vaccination process. What is uh, What about zinc? Again, zinc, uh, though it's a favorite amongst many people and I do prescribe a multivitamin which contains zinc. Uh, no real evidence of zinc utility in, uh, in COVID. So you can take it. So I, I believe in placebos. I believe in placebos and placebos are a good thing, better than azithromycin and ivermectin because they don't have much side effects. So please take placebos. You should take something because you should feel that I'm doing something for myself. Please take it. Please take vitamin C if you like, zinc if you like, vitamin D if you like. But do not take antibiotics and antivirals in Omicron. Do we need certificate of booster dose right now? Is it mandatory? So I think laws keep on changing. And I so within India, of course, it is not mandatory for uh, producing a certificate of booster in entering malls, taking flights, taking trains, etc. But abroad, I'm not so sure. There are countries which say, okay, you should have been vaccinated at least once more in the last six months or four months. I am not very sure uh, how long will these laws remain. And I'm sure that they will keep on changing because so many economies depend on tourism, etc. I think I think wisdom will prevail, and mandate mandates regarding vaccination in general in Omicron times will go. Great and pre advice for pregnant women. A uh, very important question because pregnancy, of course, is considered a uh, uh, you know used to be considered in Delta and Wuhan waves a problem because. Uh, Wuhan and Delta viruses would cause premature deliveries, sometimes miscarriages. So in Omicron, there is no risk to pregnancy, no risk to the child, no risk to the mother, no increased risk to the child or mother. Uh, if you're pregnant and you get Omicron, there is only one problem. And that is if you get it during, just before labor, meaning just when you were planning a cesarean section or were to be admitted, and if they find that your rapid antigen is positive, the hospital can unnecessarily create a problem for you. Unnecessarily. They might say, okay, we won't admit you here. While all your friends have been following up with that doctor, <clears throat> they'll say, no, okay, now you go to some place where COVID is accepted. And that is ridiculous. I hope that they don't cancel deliveries in that particular location just because the person tests positive. That would be unfair. That is what will cause mortality rather than COVID itself. What about travel advice? You know, people have started moving around freely. Vacations are on, children, uh, school. So what about the travel advisory? One very, this is a very practical and important thing that I can, I can tell you about. 
we have seen so many patients go to the US, go to Europe, land, get COVID. Land, get COVID, their cruise gets canceled. Their uh, trip to their uh, son, son's wife is pregnant and therefore their taking care of the wife gets canceled. And it's a waste of, of several days of the trip. My request to you is if you are going abroad, if you're traveling for ple uh, pleasure, work, anyway, five days prior to the travel, wear N95 masks wherever you go. Maybe 10 days prior to travel, wear N95 masks if you go in a crowded place. Take care of not getting Omicron during or just after travel. That's all you can do. And in flights, which is the again the hotbed of uh, infection, in flights and in, on airports, if you cannot afford to fall sick, then wear an N95 mask. If you can afford to fall sick, do whatever you like. But if you cannot afford to fall sick, wear an N95 mask during travel. Himanshu. So, Tushar, I wanted to go see Top Gun. Should I go to the theater or not go to the theater? I have seen it twice, so <laughs> I can't advise <laughs> again. <laughs> and frankly, I have had Omicron in the first, <coughs> first surge of Omicron. Uh, I do know that uh, I can get Omicron again with BA4 and BA5, but I don't think I will mind and take care because I'm in my clinic all the time and it's very difficult to not be exposed to people uh, even with a good mask. So I am not bothered. You can watch. It's a good movie. <laughs> so that's the whole thing. Any crowded areas, you know, yeah. marriages, halls, functions, movie theater, oh, yes. any closed, yeah. area, preferable to stay in an open area. You go to a restaurant, transit outside if you can. Uh, closed area, avoid it if you can. But if you have to, wear your mask. And the classical thing is they won't let you in without a mask. But after you are into the restaurant, everybody removes and, and everything is going on. So, well, think, that's the way it is. I think masking has to reduce. I think masking has to reduce significantly. What is the difference between RT-PCR and RAT test? Yeah, as I said, RT-PCR is a much more specific test. Uh, and uh, uh, it is sensitivity, meaning its pickup rate is better. False tests are very uh, rare. But... Uh, but rapid antigen has uh, nearly replaced RT-PCR in most places. The US gives two, RT two rapid antigen test kits to every citizen of its uh, of its country, uh, and uh, they don't do RT-PCR much anymore. So I think uh, we have good, and if you want a good test, then buy a good brand. I, I prefer PanBio, which is an international brand, P-A-N-B-I-O, uh, Abbott Laboratory, I think. And yeah, um, I would I would do a, strongly believe in rapid antigen test. Uh, I think oh, we are being reminded of a question again and again. What about the high-risk contacts? What do you do with high-risk contacts of index cases or patients within the family? High-risk contacts, if they've had Omicron or any other wave infection and have had two doses or three doses, uh, they, can, they will always get away with mild disease. Always get away whatever, even if their age is 90 they will get away with mild disease. If they have not been vaccinated, and we know many people have not been vaccinated, if they've not been vaccinated, they have severe debility, then they should be kept away from the index case, from the infected case. And just you have to pray that the lack of vaccination does not harm them. But actually we have seen unvaccinated people also doing very well, even if they are elderly. In Omicron, during Omicron. On the million dollar question, Tushar, is uh, doing your oxygen, you know, the oxygen pulse test oximeter. back at home, which was so very pulse oximeter. Uh, how much valid is it? The walk test, you know, walk for five minutes and then check your oxygen also. So what is your opinion on that? So in Omicron times, because the Omicron virus does not affect the lung parenchyma, it affects more the upper respiratory tract and not the lungs themselves. Pulse oximetry has become virtually virtually unnecessary. And I would strongly recommend everybody not to keep on putting that thing here uh, twice a day, thrice a day, or twice an hour, thrice an hour. Stop pulse oximetry completely unless you, you become breathless, you have severe cough, or, or your fever extends beyond 72 hours. Remember, 72 hours is the, is the limit of Omicron fever. If your fever crosses 72 hours, either the diagnosis is wrong 
or you have to look for complications. 72 hours, and, and one more thing, because that drives many people to panic. Young people with Omicron can have a low grade 99.5 <coughs> fever for several days, maybe up to four weeks. Young people would feel absolutely fine, but just because they put their thermometer in the mouth, they will find sometimes 99.5 fever for long days. Again, a normal phenomenon. And I tell my patient that your immunity is just doing better than other people's immunity. And you're you are creating antibodies. Your fever is a good sign. The fever is generally a good thing for the body. So that is only exception where fever can last beyond three days. Young people, low-grade fever. Otherwise, three days. Sure, roll off, <clears throat> roll off baby aspirin. You know, to avoid any, there is no harm taking a baby aspirin regularly. So, how about during COVID times? Would it help us not to get any kind of phlebitis or any kind of venous occlusion? One thing we have learned is that there is never no harm in taking medicines. There is never no harm in taking medicines. Even vitamins can cause harm. Vitamin D can cause kidney stones if you take excessive vitamin D. Baby aspirin given in people who do not have a reason, like a heart problem, brain problem, etc. Baby aspirin taken, taken for life increases the chances of brain hemorrhage while protecting heart attacks. And that benefit, risk benefit ratio actually is worse towards risk than towards benefit in some people. So the point is, people take baby aspirin in COVID or people are promoting baby aspirin in COVID, but so far, because even though there have been many studies done to find out uh, whether there is any benefit, so far no benefit has been shown of taking aspirin to prevent COVID-related heart attacks. There are many talks that it's a heart attack, it's been a heart attack, it's a heart attack, or COVID, it's a COVID vaccine, it's a COVID vaccine, it's a COVID vaccine, it's a COVID vaccine. Please remember that Delta and Wuhan increased the chances of heart-related deaths for up to one year after COVID. But Omicron does not do that. Omicron is a different organism. It's a different ball game. So don't be scared. Don't take unnecessary medications. So Omicron is a friend who's come to protect you against the deltas and the other dangerous strains. The future. Of, uh, the future, the, the future strains. So yeah. corollary Omicron, again to the whole Omicron thing. A, we are lucky to have Omicron as the new variant. It could have been much worse. It could have been much, much worse. Omicron is bothersome. Of course it is bothersome. But it could have been much, much worse. Nature has been kind. It can always give you a good part and it can give you a dangerous part. For one beauty queen born somewhere, there's an equally ugly person born somewhere else. That's how nature divides. You know, the Gaussian curve which comes out over there. So, uh, what is your anticipation? Can we have a dangerous strain still coming sometime? So I don't hopeful. want to be sounding pessimistic. No, I'm hopeful actually. Variants will come. So, Omicron is not the last variant of concern. Omicron, more uh, variants will come. But remember, to displace the current Omicron variant, sub-variants or sub lineages, the new variant will have to be more transmissible and to become really bothersome, it will have to become more virulent. Now, that is not going to happen. I don't think that will happen, ever. We are going to see more and more transmissible varieties without seeing more and more a dangerous variety. I think, and I'm hopeful about that, uh, you must remember the virus is a smart organism. It does not want to kill. It does not want to kill. Because if it kills, it loses hosts where it multiplies. It will not kill and keep on propagating, cause infection, become transmissible, cause more cough, so people will spread it more. But it will not kill. So any new variant, I think, will just cause, keep on causing infection, and the infection will take go on whirl, whirlwind tours and, and die. Now, this particular surge, I think, will not last more than one month. We are seeing June as the month of BA4, BA5. I don't think it will last more than that. But then another one will come after a few months, which will be more transmissible. We'll have to live with that for some time at least. It's not a three-year pandemic that people used to say. This is very different. This is a completely new thing happening to us. So friends, what he said is the selfish gene book, which is such an important thing. He mentioned that very subtly. 
that the virus is not interested in killing you it can survive only if you are alive like the other virus in africa if it kills you it's not going to survive it will also have to die so it will mutate to a level because nature and genetic is very smart it wants to survive in symbiosis it doesn't want to manufacture food it wants to live on your tissues and it will want to spread across to increase its own you know like dharma gurus they all want to spread their religion the virus also wants to spread their own self across the world and this is what it is one more thing about uh, tushar opinion on pfizer's paxlovid approved by fda for eu only any side effects paxlovid is another umbrella that has come after the monsoon has gone paxlovid was good for delta it has absolutely no and paxlovid the only proof of paxlovid working was in wuhan or delta strains in unvaccinated people paxlovid never showed a great response in omicron ever has never shown a great response in vaccinated people ever paxlovid is of course again, again uh, it's such a such an important molecule financially for pfizer and they have not been able to capitalize thankfully for once pfizer has not achieved what it went started out to achieve and they but they have made enough money they have made enough money from their vaccine so i don't think they will bother too much paxlovid will stay in the storage houses and only if delta or something like that comes back will it be useful otherwise it's a useless molecule currently ushta from a surgeon colleague of ours he is asking can surgeons operate routine cases without doing an rt pcr if yes any precautions for surgeons and patients i think my answer is you can operate but take it for granted that they are rt pcr positive protect yourself with the n95 anyway in the operating room we always are masked so now go ahead your your that, choice that is the perfect answer if you have if you can wear if you can wear an n95 mask plus one more mask usually you are double masked in operation theater uh, and uh, if you yourself don't feel very weak and debilitated on that particular day which can happen you can feel very weak on it and then of course you can operate you must operate doctors must work compulsory unless they are so weak that they cannot work they must work especially in these times they must work a question an important question 67 year old having two doses of covid shield but unknown of infection in the last three waves no comorbidities would booster be beneficial i would give the booster i have made a principle that if there is no infection previously then a third dose in a senior citizen is necessary of course you can do your because it's covid shield you can do your uh, antibodies to nucleo capsule antigen if the antibodies to nucleo capsule antigen are positive then you can presume that you had covid in the past and not take the third dose otherwise the third dose there is statistic to show that senior citizens mortality does decrease if there is a third dose even in omicron omicron rarely kills but in senior citizens you can make it further certain that it will not kill by taking a booster thanks tushar a lot of clarity in life friends omicron is a friendly variant it is come here to protect you against the deltas and the betas and the gammas it is there to give you the right kind of immunity it doesn't affect your lungs that badly your oxygen is not really going to get affected pulmonary fibrosis endocarditis or other kinds of complications are not there fever may last for 3 days 72 hours as tushar said if anything more get yourself investigated don't do any test not required don't get scared at any given point of time tushar we are all approachable and for the larger interest of the society so don't be worried take your vitamin c vitamin d if you have to take your b complex if you have to relax enjoy take it easy take this as a opportunity to take some rest in life and uh, well go see your top gun and go see and travel if you want but the essential thing is the n95 that that you have to wear take your medications your blood pressure medicines and the other medicines in time don't don't leave it because comorbidities are always always not the best thing to have in life tushar jaane ke pehle mere dost you have to give some shairi aise nahi chalta ek one joke and one shairi i cannot let you go without that tax bharna padta hai hamare hamara clinic hai na that uh, our clinic itself provides such a lot large, large number of jokes to all of us and uh, a popular thing that i tell people is ke pehle ek doha suna deta hu 
कि किसे पता था बाजारों में एक दिन ऐसा आएगा किसे पता था बाजारों में एक दिन ऐसा आएगा क्रोसिंग डोलो से भी ज्यादा गाढ़ा बेचा जाएगा ये ये हमारी पैंडेमिक की स्टोरी है Uh, हमारे क्लिनिक में हमारी रिसेप्शनिस्ट एक दिन एक मरीज से फोन पे बात कर रही थी कि मिस्टर मेहरा मैं समझ गई आपको क्या हो रहा है और कहा हो रहा है डॉक्टर शाह ने कितनी बार मना किया है कि पाइल्स का मलम और टाइगर बाम बाजू बाजू में ना रखा करें गुड सोर्स ऑफ गुड सोर्स ऑफ एंटरटेनमेंट फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस या थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर वेल्यूएबल टाइम a uh, lot of clarity believe me very nice very bold statements really appreciate genuine things coming from the heart all in all not too bad relax if there is anything we'll tell you but this is not going to last for a long time it's a friendly variant it's going to give you the best kind of immunity that you can have you may not need to take a vaccine dose later so if you get it you're lucky if your children get it in school they are lucky because they are going to be protected for a long time to come all in all everything good nothing terribly wrong like what we used to have lectures earlier on on covid 19 where to share it come and we had you know some 25000 live views you know bad days real bad days and we didn't know what was happening and what to do at that point of time we have learned so much more about covid after that in the last year year and a half thanks uh, for coming to share and much appreciate your much. time and efforts wonderful platform and thank you so much friends uh, thanks so much for watching this show and uh, hope it gives a lot of information and insight into what's happening right now the wave is coming i can see it in front of me the tsunami is there a lot of people around you have got infected it's not just the headline screaming that sonia gandhi priyanka gandhi and sharuk and you know, this party and that party and i far give rise to this you are going to get it well if you get it don't get worried it's not that bad it's a friendly variant relax chill if required hospitalization most often than not 99.9% of the time you won't need to get hospitalized so all in all sounding off and rounding off on a good note goodbye Das Vidanya and thanks to Shah thanks Pooja for being the backbone support for me and Navneet always there thank you uh, sir to give me yes uh, always there to give me the support from behind so that the flawless uh, streamline goes and Ashok also thanks very much much appreciate everybody's time here and hope this gives a lot of clarity we'll be back soon with another interesting show thank you so much everybody thanks to Shah once again bye bye sir Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.